Hi there gamers! Lenovo just completely re ramped their flagship gaming lineup, the Legion 7. The laptop right here in front of me is the Intel HX equipped variant, but my colleague Alan also tested the all AMD version. The fact alone that you got the option in such a high-end device is amazing and great news for us consumers. Since for the first time in years there's actually competition up to the highest levels. And the decision of what option to buy does not only come down to price. That said, the all AMD version is significantly cheaper than the Intel and Nvidia combo. So it will be very interesting to see if you have to give up more than things like DLSS and higher Cinebench scores. Our Intel review unit comes with the fastest mobile CPU currently available, the i9-12900HX and an RTX 3080 Ti. Whereas the AMD version comes with a Ryzen 6900HX and Team Red's RX 6850M XT. Both models share 32GB of RAM but differ in their storage configurations, with 1TB for the Intel version and 2TB for AMD. Both configs share an excellent chassis and there really isn't a lot to complain in this regard. The whole unit feels very dense and stiff and while the Legion 7 is a bit on the heavier side, given the potent hardware and therefore cooling potential required, it is still well within margins. Overall chassis dimensions are very compact even for a 16 inch device. And if one imagines that the Intel Legion 7 houses almost the same hardware combination as the crazy big MSI Titan GT77, it is almost remarkable. We just have to see if Lenovo is able to keep it all cool, but more on that later. Speaking of recently tested, we really tried our very best to bring more and more of our written reviews from the website to this YouTube channel. And we wanted to thank each and every one of you for being a part of this journey. If this is the first video you're watching, please consider subscribing or feel free to browse for our other reviews. Both machines offer the same port layout, but given the individual hardware platforms, there are some key differences. While both USB-Cs on the left are Thunderbolt 4 for the Intel machine, only one of them on the AMD powered Legion is USB-C 4.0, while the other is USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 with DisplayPort support. On the right, both variants get a single USB-C 3.2 Gen 1, a headphone mic combo port and a camera kill switch. The rest of the I.O. is located on the back and here both machines share the same layout and specs and come with two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports, one USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 with display port and power delivery, HDMI 2.1, 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet and the power connector. Speaking about power delivery, when running on a 100W USB-C charger, the power targets for the CPU are limited to 45W and 50W for the GPU. While the AMD Legion 7 is lacking a little when receiving data, apart from that both laptops offer excellent wireless communication with up-to-date performance. Below the base plate that is easily removable, you have access to two RAM slots and a pair of M.2 slots for easy storage and memory upgrades. Both models share their inputs and Lenovo actually managed a very nice typing experience for the keyboard. Feedback is very precise and the keys offer adequate travel. Most of the secondary keys are also standard size and only the numpad has to make do with slightly downsized keycaps. Overall most people should be able to get used to this keyboard relatively quickly. As a nice touch for gamers, our model came with a set of Keramic WASD keys. And while I think they look absolutely amazing, they feel a bit weird for gaming because of the smooth surface. The trackpad again offers no reason to complain, just for some reason it takes me always some time to get used to the slightly offset position to the left. The Legion 7's display is a little bit of a mixed bag. While it offers very solid specs for gamers with G-Sync, high brightness and very fast response times, Considering the price point, we would kinda expect something a little bit more high-end to be quite honest. Since both models would be very well suited for content creation or other more workstation focused tasks, we would have also wished for higher color gamut coverage outside of sRGB. Again, 100% sRGB and roughly 70% for both DCI-P3 and Adobe RGB are not particularly bad for a gaming display. 
but something like a mini LED display which has recently tested in the RG Flow X16 would have been a great fit for the high-end Lenovo's. Alright folks, let's talk performance and let's see what both of these puppies have to offer. Since performance tests in different modes and hardware configurations are always very time consuming, I will again only give you a brief overview. For all the detailed results from dozens of different benchmarks, please head over to our written reviews that we linked in the description below. In terms of raw CPU performance, we can keep it short since the 6900HX from AMD is just no match for the i9-12900HX. To our surprise, the variant in the Legion can even keep up with the MSI Titan GT77, a much larger device with a ridiculously bigger cooling assembly. In our performance rating, that is a combined score out of all of our tests like Cinebench, Geekbench and Blender for example, the i9 offers almost 40% better performance overall compared to AMD's mobile flagship. In our system performance tests, the Intel version is again topping our benchmark charts, but both machines offer a very pleasant overall user experience. You would be hard pressed to feel a difference here at all. In the GPU department, both models are very close to each other in synthetic tests, with the RTX 3080 Ti in the Intel model only getting around a 2% lead in our combined 3 d Mark performance rating. We recently started to add Blender benchmarks to our test suite and should you be into anything that is CGI related, the RTX 3080 Ti just leaves the AMD card in the dust. While things don't look too bad when you compare the CUDA results to the classroom scores for the AMD card, Render times are cut in half as soon as you enable the RTX enabled optics renderer. Both machines offer excellent gaming performance though and are able to deliver a smooth 60fps plus gaming experience in the native QHD resolution, even in the most demanding games. In general, it seems like the RX 6850M XT offers a smidge more rasterization performance. But as soon as ray tracing comes into play, the RTX 3080 Ti is playing in a league of its own. The gap is further widened once DLSS is activated, since Nvidia's proprietary upscaling tech is able to further boost frame rates without significant drawbacks in terms of visual quality. In terms of fan noise, both laptops perform the same and unfortunately not very good. We are still waiting on the high-end gamer that is able to cool a 150 watts plus GPU with acceptable noise levels. For both machines, we would recommend trying to let your Legion run in balanced mode if you are willing to sacrifice some frames during gaming for acceptable noise levels. Performance mode for both models gets really loud. We did a couple of noise samples for the Intel machine since it is the only one I have in the studio right now. But on our website you can see that both machines behave almost exactly the same overall. The Intel machine sometimes ramps up the fans even in idle or low load scenarios, whereas the AMD Legion is louder in gaming loads overall. One key area in which the AMD variant comes out ahead is battery life. The Legion with Team Red's hardware is able to squeeze 3 more hours of runtime in our standard Wi-Fi test out of the same sized battery than its Intel powered counterpart. Alright folks, let's wrap things up. Overall Lenovo delivered an excellent gaming notebook with their latest Legion 7. Both configurations share the same well made and good looking chassis, the above average port selection and solid inputs. As I said before, we would have wished for a more high-end screen option considering the price you have to shell out for one of these. Speaking of price, the Intel version sets you back an insane amount of $4500, whereas the AMD variant looks almost affordable with its $2600 price tag at the time of filming. In terms of gaming performance, the AMD version is therefore the more obvious choice, unless you factor in the much better ray tracing performance and things like DLSS. But if that alone is worth the added $1900, well that is for you to decide. Things change a little when you plan to use the Legion more for work than entertainment, since the Intel and Nvidia combo offers sometimes a lot more performance in content creation scenarios like video editing or CGI rendering. 
And in these fields where time is money, the additional cost might be worth the investment. Well, well, that would be it for today. Since this is about the first time we have been almost directly be able to compare high-end AMD against Intel and Nvidia hardware, please let us know what would be your choice between these two. If you have any tips what you would want us to cover for future comparisons, please let us know as well. Until then, thanks a lot for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and maybe like this video if you felt entertained. My name is Alex, you have been amazing and I can't wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.